out of freezing sulfur ureas and meglitinate the other two important group of insulin secretor drugs are glp1 agonist and dpp4 inhibitors so in this video we are going to cover glp1 analog and dpp4 inhibitors first we should know example for glp1 analogs as i already told glp mean glucagon like peptide so example for the glp1 analogs are exinatide tasoglutide albiglutide dulaglutide lixinatide liraglutide and semaglutide all these are example for glp1 analog what is the mechanics action as the name indicate glp glucagon like peptide they call incretin incretin they are going to act on pancreatic beta cell and causes insulin secretion for example look at the physiology the glp is the one of the incretin we have incret like glp gip that is gastrointestinal polypeptide these incretins are acting on pancreatic beta cell stimulates insulin release and they also decreases glucagon release ultimately lowering the blood sugar that's a normal physiological action of glp a natural incretin but the natural glp undergo inactivation by one enzyme called dipeptidyl peptidase 4 enzyme so what we do we want to have a glp1 analog which are resistant to dpp4 they are called as glp1 analogs and we have one more group of drug they are called dpp4 inhibitors so first we are going to cover glp1 analogs you know examples they are going to increases insulin secretion thereby controlling blood sugar here what is exinatide it's a synthetic form of exindin so exinatide is a synthetic form of exindin 4 exindin is the one obtained from salivary gland venum of jilla mansur from the exindin we derive a synthetic preparation called exinatide and then some extra property among the glp1 analog the albiglutide and dulaglutide having very long half life of about 5 to 7 days very longer half life and the lixizenatide may be associated with the induction of antibody formation and one more very important mc question among the glp1 analog all will cause weight loss all the glp1 analog causing weight loss in that liraglutide got fda approval for treatment of obesity this is very 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 important point a anti diabetic drug approved for treatment of obesity is liraglutide a glp1 analog and one more very very latest point we have one drug called zemaglutide the zemaglutide is the glp1 analog given orally orally remember all the glp1 analogs are given injection subcutaneous routes remember that show. all the glp1 analogs are given injection subcutaneous only one exception exinatide exinatide given orally very important and one more point among the glp1 analog the liraglutide and zemaglutide these two drugs having the very good advantage of reducing the cardiovascular risk cv risk was reduced by liraglutide and semaglutide very important now you know drug name you know mechanics action you know some properties of glp1 analog now i move on to aid your adverse effect the most important adverse effect of glp1 analog will be nausea and vomiting very important very important see the glp1 
present are present in so many areas in the body they are also seen in cns by activating the glp1 receptor in the cns there is a risk of nausea and vomiting and since they going to cause insulin release risk of hypoglycemia actually when you give glp1 analog along with sulfuria there is more risk of hypoglycemia and one more point all the glp1 analog may cause risk of pancreatitis among the glp1 analog a drug causing maximum pancreatitis problem exenatide very important so pancreatitis is the adverse effect of which group of anti diabetic drug mean think of glp1 analog another very important point the glp1 analog may have a risk of causing medullary cancer of thyroid how because in the pair of follicular c cells of thyroid gland there is a glp1 receptor so activation of glp1 receptor in the pair of follicular c cell may cause risk of medullary cancer of thyroid so as a take home message three important point you should know that points are glp1 analogs are cautiously given or better avoid in a patient with renal insufficiency pancreatitis as well as patient with having medullary cancer thyroid so there are important points on glp1 analog and then we have one more category of insulin secondary gauge dpp4 inhibitor dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors example for this category drugs are sitagliptin saxagliptin linagliptin alloagliptin and vildagliptin all the drug name are ending with a suffix called gliptin they call gliptin they call dpp4 inhibitors as the name indicate these drugs are inhibiting the dipeptidyl peptidase 4 enzyme thereby accumulating glp1 that in turn increases insulin secretion so they are also called insulin secretor gauge group of drug so here we discuss drug name and the mechanism action of dpp4 inhibitors now all the dpp4 inhibitors are given orally very important very important all the dpp4 blockers are administered orally this is important important another very important mcq point look at the kinetic when you talk about excretion most of the dpp4 blockers are undergo excretion via kidney 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 exception linagliptin so the one and only dpp4 inhibitor undergo excretion by bile is linagliptin so it's a very popular mc question find out the dpp4 inhibitor safe in kidney failure mean think of linagliptin linagliptin undergo excretion by bile so safe in kidney failure this is very 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 important mc question another popular mc question look here among the dpp4 inhibitor only one drug saxagliptin this is only one drug undergoes metabolism by hepatic microsome enzyme the so called cytochrome p450 enzyme since this is a one and only dpp4 inhibitor undergo metabolism by hepatic enzyme this drug alone prone for various drug interaction like enzyme induction or enzyme induction type of drug interaction the another very important point you should know about this see after discussing the mechanism action uses of dpp4 blocker finally we move on to discussion of adverse drug reactions of dpp4 inhibitors the most commonest adverse effect of dpp4 blocker will be upper respiratory tract infection may cause laryngitis or pharyngitis sometimes causing sinusitis problem and one more important point they may cause arthralgia joint pain this is also important question 
anti diabetic drug causes increase in risk of joint pain is dpp4 inhibitors and rarely on chronic therapy risk of congestive cardiac failure it is maximally caused by a drug called saxagliptin among the dpp4 blocker saxagliptin may cause congestive cardiac failure on chronic therapy it's a rare complication so the most common side effect of dpp4 blocker mean upper respiratory tract infection and they also causing risk of joint pain that finishes dpp4 inhibitor and glp1 analogs